All right, everyone, check out my latest and greatest creation. Uh, where is it? All around us. It just looks like your laboratory. You are standing in the Hologram Maker 5000. <gasps> What's it do? You can scan any story into the machine here, and then it creates a holographic version of it in this room. We can create any world we want. <gasps> the story of Holy Week, done as a musical with all our friends. That's a bit more detailed than what I had in mind for... We've been taught so many stories about the Bible long ago. But just because we learned them doesn't really mean we know. She wasn't kidding about the musical part. Does it mean we know what, Mimi? What it was like to be there, what we'd feel. That's a donkey. Oh, good! Leo, you get to play Jesus! Really? I'm the lead? You're perfect! Oh, well, it would be an honor. I'll need a moment to prepare for such a serious role. Serious? Leo, it's a musical about Holy Week. It's a fun, joyful celebration, so let's go! Everyone get into your parts. I bet you won't be sorry that we got this amazing chance to live Uh, Mimi, if we're going to do the story of Holy Week, you should know it's not exactly a happy story. Otto, could you go get everyone else? We're going to need a lot more people. No one's going to want to miss out on the fun. Everyone in Jerusalem lined the streets on that day. So overjoyed to see him and hear what he had to say. Hosanna! 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 So who is this Hosanna person everyone is cheering for? Hosanna is not a person. It's a place or a cat or a thing? Hosanna's a word for when you're so happy that you could sing. Yay, Jesus! So we sing Hosanna now because Jesus is on his way. Oh, okay. Hosanna in the highest. This is what I was talking about, our chance to joy that Jesus brings to us when we live his great story. How's everyone doing today? So glad you could all make it. Hello, Judas, disciple of Jesus. Hello, Pharisee, one of the temple leaders. Have you thought about our offer? You mean helping you arrest Jesus for 30 pieces of silver? I have. Hey there, you two, watch with this secret meeting. This doesn't seem important when there's Jesus to be greeting. <laughs> um, Mimi, this is actually a big part of the story. Yeah, you know, the whole betrayal thing. The what? At the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, you're right, Victor. We should cut to the Garden of Gethsemane. That'll be fun. <gasps> oh, what a lovely garden. Oh, what a perfect day. With good food and friends around. Nothing could get in the way. Hey, why are we having supper in the garden? My bad. I mentioned the garden, so Mimi went ahead and combined it with the Last Supper. How about we just call it the Last Picnic? All right, Leo, get this party started! I want to thank you all for coming to this supper. This last supper. My friends, I have some lessons to tell About taking time to remember me It's a shame Judas isn't here yet. Jesus, this bread is super good. It's my body, note that it's broken. And is this a cup of wine? It's
it's my blood spilled to forgive your sin. Oh, Leo, could we maybe dial down the talking about drinking blood and eating bodies and focus more on the smiling? I haven't even gotten to Peter denying me three times. Oh, come on, Leo, not cool. I would never do that. And even if he did, we'd cut that part for time. <gasps> oh, look, here comes Judas to save the party. the signal. Everyone move in and arrest Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is way too heavy. And let's skip ahead to a happy part. Huh? What? Oh, this isn't right. This is even worse. Governor Pilate, we're sorry for bothering you at your home. You need to sentence Jesus to death for rebelling against Rome. Didn't he also make you Pharisees look bad? Like, a what? That's not the point! He's also claiming to be God, which is super treasonous! Now order his execution, or we will become rioters! You can do what you want. I'm not getting involved. This whole Jesus thing is a problem someone else can solve. Wait, that's terrible. Pilate is just gonna let Jesus be executed? Well, yeah, Mimi. Well, that doesn't fit into my musical. You wanted to do Holy Week, Mimi, but not these sad parts. Well, let's cut to the next scene. Um, Mimi? Next scene, and everyone keep it shipper. <laughs> now it's almost time for the super upbeat positive ending. I'll remember the fun we shared. Hosanna? Oh, no. <gasps> no. This is terrible. They... they killed Jesus. Yeah. I wanted to see... what it was like... to take part in the joy and the glory. I'm so sorry that we to live up to Jesus' story. Mimi, you didn't fail. And we're glad to tell it with you. To all the stories, highs and lows, your Such a horribly sad story. Mimi, Mimi, you've told the story, but you're not done yet. Leo, is that you speaking to us from heaven? I'm on the intercom system. What do you mean we're not done yet? You've still got the story that comes after this story to tell. You mean it's to be continued? Yeah, this isn't the end. Well, why didn't you say so? This isn't the end, gonna come around the bend, cause this isn't the end of Jesus. I think we blew a fuse. Yep, the hologram maker 5000 overloaded the circuits. Who needs lights? Come on, people. This isn't the end, gonna come around the bend, cause this isn't the end of Jesus. You can't see it, but I'm doing jazz hands. Who is it? Pastor Donna? It's Ada. I have a question about your sermon about Thomas. Questions? Come on. <laughs> so I have some questions about today's sermon. 
I will. And by I have some questions about today's sermon, she meant great job with today's sermon. It was clear as day. No questions here, thank you. Goodbye, God bless now. <gasps> Victor, what are you doing? Oh, nothing much. Just trying to keep you from getting kicked out of church forever. Kicked out of church? I was just asking a question about the sermon. The sermon was completely clear. Do not ask questions. Ever. For any reason. I don't think that was the point of the sermon. You heard how Thomas is viewed in the modern church. It's a doubter. A non-believing doubter who has too many questions. But... Good uh, Christians who are confident in their faith don't need to waste time asking questions. But what if... Yeah! No questions! Hey, guys. What are you talking about? Victor says we'll get kicked out of church if we ask questions. They'll kick me out of church if I ask a question? Phrase it as a statement, Clara. They'll kick me out of church? That's still a question. What's that, Monty? <clears throat> Pastor Donna, if Jesus was the sa- Not cool, Monty. Not cool at all. No questions. Gotcha. Are you a secret agent? Pastor Donna? Oh, no. If the Trinity is the Father, the Son- Huh? Everyone, please, stop sabotaging yourselves with all these questions. Can we ask if we whisper? No. Can we at least think about questions? No. Can I chew on it for a while? Stop! Stop! You will get us all excommunicated! What's extra communicated? No more questions! Victor, are you okay? No! Victor, if we can't ask questions, how are we going to learn anything? Ada, that is a good question. All right, class. Today we're going to talk about Jesus meeting two of his followers on the road to Emmaus. Ooh, ooh, Roxy. Where is Emmaus? Excellent question, Jax. Emmaus was a town located near Jerusalem. Two of Jesus' followers were walking there from Jerusalem after Jesus had died. But he wasn't dead for too long. That's right, Clara. After three days, Jesus rose from the dead. Well, there you go. Jesus is risen. Case closed. Who's up for kickball? Actually, Victor, it wasn't as simple as that. Jesus had risen from the dead, but not everyone knew that yet. But... The women went to the tomb and saw it, right? But not everyone saw it. So there were a lot of rumors about what had actually happened. People weren't sure what to believe. That's why the disciples had to explain it to people. Oh, the disciples weren't certain either. So, two of Jesus' followers were on the road to Emmaus. They were trying to sort through everything that had happened when they met Jesus on the road. Great. Mystery solved. But... They did not recognize him. Wait, what? They didn't know it was Jesus? No. Was he in disguise? Like a trench coat and beard, maybe? I thought Jesus already had a beard. The story just says that they didn't recognize him and that they told him about what had happened to Jesus in Jerusalem. So they told Jesus about Jesus without realizing it was Jesus? Yes. Do we know when glasses were invented? And they didn't recognize him until Jesus broke bread with them at their house. Did Jesus have a very special way of breaking bread? They were like, aha, I only know of one guy who tears into a loaf of bread like that. According to the story, their eyes were opened and they recognized him and then he disappeared. Oh, scary. He didn't stay for dinner? And he didn't explain why he did any of that? There's a lot of things we don't know about this story. What do you all think it means? Well, they walk and talk with Jesus, but don't know it's him. So could it mean that we won't always know that Jesus is with us, even though he is? Or maybe it's about walking with Jesus in our lives, just like the two followers did? Those are both really good thoughts on the story, you two. I'm pretty sure it's Jesus telling them to get their eyes checked. But okay, Roxy, which one of us is right? Oh, there isn't a right answer to this story. I don't know for certain what it means. I just wanted you all to think on it. 
Okay, but if you had to say one of us was more right than the others, it would probably be... Victor, that's not... She said Victor! Yes! Victory for Victor! Bam, 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 Whoa. bam. Whoa! I appreciate your enthusiasm, Victor. Victor, 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 Victor. Tot, don't climb the shelves, please. It's very dangerous. Mm. Tot, don't touch that. Don't touch anything. It's sensitive equipment. Yeah, super science is not for little kids, Tot. You need to be at least nine years old. Behold, the Portable Portal Producer 5000. That's amazing. How did you make that? Oh, it's simple. Let me show you. The Portable Portal Producer 5000 operates by manipulating the basic laws of quantum mechanics. Tiny Planck-length sized fluctuations in the fabric of space-time are all around us in between the dark matter and the light matter in our universe, all while factoring in the rotational and vectorial movement of the Earth. Wow, I didn't understand any of that. Shiny. Tot, no! Bye-bye. you out to my flock of sheep? Portal. Ah, so you're exploring the world with portal technology, eh? Must be fun. No. Lost. You're lost? Well, that won't do at all. I'll help you. Help? Sure. I'm a shepherd. When my sheep get lost, I always get them home. Usually it doesn't involve teleportation, but I'll see what I can do. <coughs> no, Blinky. That isn't food. Be careful. You don't want to hurt yourself. My sheep are little troublemakers, but what can I say? I still love them. Ah, what's this? A button that says home. Well, that seems promising. Is this your home? Yes. Take care now and try not to get lost in the future. All right, little lamb? Thank you. Hey, it's what shepherds do. Didn't I have more sheep? And so then Leo says, well, I invented the robot, so I get to... What? He invented the robot, so he gets to... What? Oh, no! The cornerstone! The cornerstone of the church is gone! What? How? Hmm... The dirt is still moist. It hasn't been gone long. Oh, oh no! <gasps> the church can't stand without the cornerstone! It's the foundation of the whole building! Ada, go get help! Come on, Otto. The entire church rests on your shoulders. You're the cornerstone now. Oh, no. You're in over your head. Again. It's too much for you. What is it too much for? Phantasmo? Phantasmo to the rescue! Yep, it is. Too much for Phantasmo. It is way too much for Phantasmo. Make way, make way. These sticks won't hold long. We have to find the cornerstone or the church will collapse. But it's only one stone. 
It's the most important stone in the whole building. Wait, is that why Pastor Donna said Jesus is the cornerstone of our faith? Yes! What would these fiends possibly want with our precious cornerstone? We're out of sticks. Maybe we should get an adult? There's no time. Quickly, to the woods. That's where sticks are made. <gasps> Monty. Hi, Victor. Hi, Ada. Monty, you took the cornerstone? Oh, you mean the Jesus stone. Uh, Jesus stone? Well, Pastor Donna said Jesus is the cornerstone. Our Jesus stone didn't really look like Jesus, so I decided to fix that. Hi, Jesus! How did you learn to sculpt so well? There's no time to debate Monty's sudden and immaculate artistry. We need to get the cornerstone back before the church collapses! Uh, so, uh, this is how it ends. At least, we're not alone! Hold on, Otto and Jax! The Jesus stone is here! Easy! Will it hold? We did it! We restored the foundation! The church is saved! Hooray! And so Jesus told his disciples to go forth and tell others about him. He said that he would always be with them. And then he ascended. All right, I give up. You got me. What does it look like to ascend? Obviously, it means, uh, Ada should actually be the one to tell you. She's the one reading the story and at a fourth grade level, too. So way to go, Ada. It means Jesus rose up off the ground and into the sky. Classic Jesus. So cool. <laughs> and then what did he do? It looks like that was it. He ascended into heaven. Are you saying that's the last Jesus story? I think so. Yeah. <sighs> All right, then. Good job, team. Let me know if you ever want to get together for kickball or anything. Victor, where are you going? Sunday school isn't over yet. Oh, Adelphia. Of course it's over. Church is over. For all of us. Forever. Victor's right. We finished the Bible, so we must be done now. But we didn't finish it. There are still all these pages. <laughs> I'm sure that's just wrapping up loose ends, maybe a special thanks section. But we all know what happened after that, so let's move on. Wait, we know what happened after that? How do we know? Well, Jesus told the disciples to go out and tell everyone about him and spread his good news. And here we all are, in a church. So I guess that means everything worked out for the disciples afterward. Yep, they all did a fantastic job, and now we all know the story and lessons of Jesus. So, later. Later, Victor! Well, Ada, I guess I'll see you around. Of course you'll see me. I'm your sister. Wait. What is it? What about the church clothing drive next week? We were all going to help with that. Oh. Well, we'll still help with that, of course. And what about the pancake breakfast next month? Oh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> we'll definitely be back for that. And the Christmas pageant is only seven months away. Okay, we'll still do church community stuff. I hadn't considered how much it was a part of our lives. And if finishing the story of Jesus means we're done with the church, why do our parents still come? I just assumed they were incredibly slow readers. Well, it looks like the stories after Jesus ascends are all about the disciples telling his story to others. And then stories of those people telling more people. And then those people telling even more people who tell... <gasps> oh, wow! Do you know what that means? Um, no. If the people who heard the story and then told the story are in the story, that means... We're in the story, too! Oh, my I mean, gosh! That's so awesome! awesome. Oh, What's going on with this, you guys? I've been on the main character. Um, <clears throat> well, now that we know the story of Jesus, we obviously should be sharing it. Oh, does that mean we get to teach Sunday school now? Well, yeah, I would think so. I mean, 
I am reading at a fourth grade level. Good morning, everyone. I have some very exciting news. Miss Jane is out of town this weekend. And you're excited that she's gone. What did Miss Jane ever do to you? Victor, I'm excited because you have a very special substitute teacher. Holly Spirio. Holly Spirio? Who's that? Hello, oh. children. I am Holly Spirio, Sunday school instructor extraordinaire. How did... Did you just pass through the ceiling? She's a ghost! Nonsense. I'm a person, just like all of you. Except I enter rooms through holes in the ceiling. What hole in the ceiling? That one, right there. That wasn't there a second ago! Pay attention to Holly Spirio, everyone. She helped me become the Christian I am today. And she's here to do the same for you. And how is she going to do that? By being your advocate. What's an advocate? What is an advocate, you say? An advocate. Well, I'll tell you. If I had to, it would be so easy to describe. Advocates will help you and their counsel will always ring true. Advocates will always be your guide. Roxy, take the bridge. Advocates will advocate that this advocate is never late. Her judgment and advice is always sound. You can never lose your advocate, though life What is going on? Where is this music coming from? Ada? Otto? I think Holly Spirio might be the Holy Spirit. Holly the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Come on, Victor. No, think about it. Holly says that she is our advocate, just like the Holy Spirit. Also, Holly says that she will help guide us towards God. Again, like the Holy Spirit. Also, Holly might have flown here, which might be like the Holy Spirit. Also, her name is Holly Spirio. That's two letters away from Holy Spirit. Ada, tell him why he's wrong. I don't know, Otto. Victor sounds kind of convincing. <laughs> oh, how delightful. Um, now, children, are you ready for me to begin advocating? Cut the butter, Holly. We want answers. Now. One, are you the Holy Spirit? Two, prove you're not the Holy Spirit. And three, we know you're the Holy Spirit, so just come clean now or face the consequences. <laughs> what? Why is she laughing? <sighs> Oh, Victor, I'm not the Holy Spirit. For you see, all the work I do, that's merely the Holy Spirit working through me. But why can you fly? And make holes appear in the ceiling? And inspire others to break into song? Because I'm British, Otto. Ah, uh, see? That makes sense. Yes, it does. Because... You can never lose your advocate, though life may throw you in a pit. Your advocate is sure to be around. Advocates will advocate that this advocate won't miss a date. A guiding light will help you find your way. Though turmoil, stress, and hardships loom, and you'd rather go back in the womb, your advocate will see you through the day. Yes, advocates will advocate that this advocate Kid is pretty great. The rain and pain may put you in a stew. Be it problem, pickle, or a pinch, your advocate. 